Dropping in. Three, two, one. Commit to the line! Faster! They're gaining! No! 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 Wait for me. Is this the final form of open source video AI? LTX2 is here. Not only can it generate video, but it can also generate sound effects synchronously, supports multiple languages, and even comes with director-level camera movements. Today, I will not just show you sample clips. I will break down the three core workflows, text-to-video, image-to-video, and start-and-end frame control. Do not worry about VRAM. The full set of workflows has been uploaded to Renihub. You can get 1,000 free RH coins by registering through my link. You also get 100 points for logging in daily and the workflows are free to download. Come and test it out. Let us look at the text-to-video cases first. Text-to-video is what I tested the most. Honestly, the physics engine of LTX2 surprised me. The model imagination is very good, and its understanding of prompts is mostly spot on. The downside is that even with 1080p output, sometimes the image quality is still blurry, and the aesthetic generation of characters is not quite there. The character skin is a bit oily. Let us look at the first group of cases, mainly showing the camera movement capability. This is a skiing prompt. You can see the camera movement is very smooth, and the simulation of the physical world is also very accurate. The splashing snow, the character posture and movement, and Finally, a camera blocking action was added to increase the plausibility of the character breaking. You could say this clip can be shared directly after upscaling. Next is a wingsuit flying clip. Again, the trajectory of the camera movement is perfect. You can see the glasses here reflect light as the lighting changes, and you can see the eyes under the lenses. This point is very impressive. Of course, obviously, the preparation movement at the beginning violates the laws of physics. Then, this is a shot passing from inside a car to the outside. From the camera angle perspective, it is perfect. But when seeing the whole car, the proportions of the car are completely unbalanced. The ratio compared to other cars is totally wrong. Setting this issue aside, it is actually completed very well. The changes in tires and suspension when the car turns and takes off are very realistic. Because there are many cases, I will just pick those that I think best reflect the model capabilities. Then, this is a stylized abstract video it can be seen that there is no strong logical connection between scenes. I think it followed my prompts. The aesthetic in this aspect is reflected. You can see the texture of this liquid metal, the reflection, then the light and dark changes after the transition, and the embodiment of non-realistic logic prompts is relatively good. Then this is another color collision case. In these two cases, I mainly wanted to show the understanding of modern abstract art. Especially here, I pointed out the need for thick paint application and traces of a palette knife. You can see the texture of the material is handled nicely. At the end of the video, I asked for these colors to form a painting, and it did it. It is just this aesthetic. Indeed, the portrait aspect is also abstract. Then, this is a group of dark baroque surrealism combined with particle light effects. Here, it mainly shows that the particle effects are still relatively rough, not very refined. This group simulates weapons in sci-fi movies. The particle effect is slightly better than the previous case, but not too much better. The special effects can be optimized further. The next group tests anime style. They are both 3D and 2D. Overall, the corresponding styles are achieved, but the aesthetic is better in 3D. Let us pick a few to watch. First, this is Pixar style. Is not the overall completion quite good? Whether it is the atmosphere of the scene or the translucent skin texture I requested, it is vividly expressed under the lighting, and there are no strange breakdowns in movement. The different emotions of the two characters are also expressed well. The only thing is a slight blur when these two characters interact. Not a big problem. The next group is a bit Ratatouille style. This group is mainly about dialogue. I will turn on the sound. Crumb. The gods themselves will weep. Wait. Did I forget the salt? No. Nope. You can see that you the lines and mouth shapes match perfectly. Very awesome. Below is a retro pixel style horizontal game screen. Under large movements, the face collapses. This point will be more obvious in real person cases. Then this is a video I like more. A cute guinea pig. Although my prompt asked for 2D anime style, planning to make a Ghibli feel, but the final presentation is also 3D. Actually, my feeling is that this model currently supports 3D better than this simulates Minecraft. The pixel sense of blocks is perfectly reflected. The prompt for day to night transition was also followed. Actually, from this group of tests, we can see the model supports diversity. It is just better in the 3D aspect. Then these are two control groups, winter and summer respectively, mainly testing the generation of real people. The biggest feeling at first glance is that the skin texture is still lacking. The oiliness is almost unbearable to look at, but the simulation of environment and physics is very good. The details of the picture are also very rich. The snowflakes flying all over the sky, and the sea goes by the sea, and the waves in the distance are all quite good. 
Then let us look at the specific workflow. First, look at the first part. Here is the official document with basic information and local model placement paths. You can also download the models by clicking, but the models here are not complete. Complete models can be downloaded by clicking this link. Then this part is the prompt section. A feature of LTX2 text to video is you must write the prompt in great detail. The more detailed, the relatively better the effect. So here I set up a function. When you want to use your own written prompt, input one here, it will use the prompt you filled in. If you input zero here, you can simply write down the scene you want to achieve here. Then QW3VL will use your input to expand the video content. Of course, if you feel the content generated by QW3VL does not meet your ideas, you can also use Gemini or other large models to expand. Just change this here. Then this part sets our video resolution and duration. Know that our resolution must be divisible by 32. The frame rate is also filled in as a multiple of 8 plus 1. But when we finally export, we use the specification of 25 frames per s second. So here, 401 frames finally outputs a 16 second video. Then this part is the result of our final video output. Note that 25 frames is written here. If you have special needs, you can also modify it. Next is our core workflow part. The upper and lower values need to be consistent. Only then can we ensure that the audio and video are unified during final synthesis. Then this part is the model node. Here we use the LTX2 FP8 model. Everyone knows this is a checkpoint model. It includes VAE. Behind it connects the matching camera movement. Flora, this set of camera movement. Flora's is very rich, including forward, backward, left, right, crane, up, down movement, and fixed camera. Note that this Lora is very important for improving video output quality, especially in the image to video part. We will talk about this later. Then here is a two times upscale model, mainly connected during the second sampling. Below is our audio VAE and dual clip model encoders. Here we choose Gemma 3 and LXT2 FP8 models. Local users note you can change this Gemma 3 to the FP8 version. This will significantly reduce VRAM usage. Do not blame me for not reminding you. Then you might notice another detail enhancement, Laura candidate here, and another camera movement, Laura. I mentioned this earlier, this is because our LTX2 video generation uses two-stage sampling. You can look here. This part is the first sampling, mainly generating the basic content of the video. Then through the second part of detail enhancement and upscaling, we get the final video. As for why upscale, you can look at this part. First here, creates a video empty laden, then passes through a 0.5 times scaling node, then inputs to this LTX video dedicated latent space node. Then here, creates an audio empty latent through the frame rate we set earlier also connects to this dedicated audio latent node. Then after integrating the two to gather input into this custom sampler, here we perform our first sampling. Here we use the official scheduler default parameters 20 steps, then CFG equals four. Older ancestor sampler, the previously integrated latent is input here. After completion passed through this node to separate audio and video again, video will connect here for an upscale here needs to connect the official upscale model. Then enter the second sampling stage. The second sampling can be seen as a manually adjusted sigma's parameter, meaning we can actually adjust this position ourselves. But for now, we just generate according to official values. Finally, we combine video and audio here. Export is complete. The workflow looks complex, but it is very clear after separating by area. The part below is our automatic prompt expansion part. Here is an instruction I wrote. You just need to simply input the content you want in front and dialogue, then set the frame rate. Here, it will automatically replace your input content, then input into QA3VL for prompt generation. Okay, text to video part introduction complete. The next workflow is image to video. From the thumbnail, you can see not much difference from our text to video workflow. So let us start from the workflow. The model introduction part is the same. Here, we need to upload a reference image. Then the prompt part has the same function. Zero is automatic expansion. One is directly using the prompt you input. Then here, set resolution and frame count. For frame count, I tried 121 and it is stable without OM. If you want to generate more frames, you can appropriately lower the generation resolution. Here is the generated video, also maintaining 25 frames output. Then come to our core node area. The model part is completely identical. The main change is in this place. Here we connected a resolution scaling node, ensuring when you input images of any resolution, its dimensions are divisible by 32. Then here is a scale to 1536 node because it is official default. I kept it. Then scale by 0.5 times based on image dimensions combined with our set frame rate. Create a video empty latent. Then in this LTX dedicated image to video node, input our uploaded image into latent. The subsequent first sampling part is exactly the same as text to video. 
coming to the second sampling here. Here also added the same LTX image to video node as before. The remaining parts are also completely the same. Okay, let us look at the cases now. Actually, a very important factor in image to video is that our base image must be clear enough and have enough details. This way, the generated effect generally won't be too bad. But currently, image to video also has a problem. Once the character speaks, the face will have relatively large deformation and facial muscles will have issues. Let us look at the first group of cases. This group is CG effect. You can see when my original image details are good enough, the generated video is also very nice. Look at the movement of these flames. The smoke after flames disappear. These spark dissipations are all good. The soldiers in the background are also in a fighting state, though suddenly standing straight at the end is a bit strange, and there is some blur during fast movement. Next is also a CG effect character. The speaking effect is okay. Clothing details are also maintained okay. Movement is also fine, just the height is a bit short. The lighting effect behind is like text to video. Texture is slightly worse, feeling like old era special effects. Next group is multi-character dialogue. This case is actually fine during character walking and speaking. Only the eyes part breaks down relatively. Obviously, the remaining flower petals in the scene, the fountain in the background, even the camera zoom blur effect are completed very well. The lighting part too, very awesome. Let us look at the next group, three-person dialogue in the night scene. A push in camera movement, then the performance of the three people is quite natural, provided you ignore their facial breakdown parts. I think what satisfies me is the model as understanding of materials. Look at this black sequin dress. Its light reflection fits its material very well. The middle one is velvet texture. The girl on the right is smooth fabric. These are all rendered very well. The railing and glass behind have no problems. The distant blurred background is also very perfect as the camera pushes in, achieving the texture of large aperture shooting. I think LTX2, as understanding of camera movement, is very strong. Then the next group is fusion portrait of reality and painting. Look at the first case. Behind this portrait is obviously a colorful ink painting. The model also understood this detail. Here, the flow of water and mist is very beautiful. Trees are also slightly floating in the process of three cranes flying. Its lighting also interacted with the character. Very impressive. If these three cranes also kept this ink style, that would be even better. Of course, the current effect is already very perfect. Then you can see, as long as the character does not speak, facial breakdown situations will decrease. But character consistency is obviously lacking. The last case, movement is smooth. But the clouds in the background here did not move. Should be because I did not input background content. Then here, the sword was generated according to my request. Hand movements are no problem, but it is also obvious. When the character speaks, there are obvious wrinkles on the face. A bit like the feeling of excessive facial muscle pulling. I think the rest is all good, okay? That is the image to video part. The core of image to video still lies in the base image. Then the prompt part can be tried more. Next, let us talk about the start and end frame workflow. Similarly, let us start with the workflow introduction, because actually the changes are not big. Here, we need to upload the first frame and the last frame. Similarly, the higher the quality of uploaded images, the better the effect comes out. Here is also the prompt. Then here is resolution and frame count. Then save our video here. The model group combination here has no changes either. Note that between start and end frames, you must add this camera movement LoRa because watching everyone's usage process, PPT like stuttering videos might appear, but after adding LoRa, there's no such problem. So I defaulted it to on in my workflow. And with weight one, the camera movement effect is best. Next is the image input here has an extra group of image resolution processing nodes. Then right here, originally the image to video node. Now change to the start and end frame node to explain this start and end frame node needs to be installed separately. Here is the author as repository page. I will also put the repository address in the description. Remember to check it out. This one actually supports three image inputs. Here is also a middle frame node. Later, I will tell you how to expand with a third image. Let us continue looking at the workflow part. The subsequent second sampling part also replaced the image to video node here with the start and end frame node. The rest remains consistent. Additionally, if you need three images, just copy an extra image upload node, then copy this group of image processing nodes, then connect the image output port to the middle frame position and you are good. Then come to our prompt reverse engineering here, change this input image path number to three, then refresh it. If it does not appear immediately, you can refresh a few more times or reset the node and refresh again. Okay, next let us look at our cases. I also did different tests for start and end frames. First, this group is strongly correlated between two images. You can see camera movement is very natural. Character dynamics are also good. Just this weapon is a bit strange. The background clouds are also flowing. 
then look at the next one. Same camera movement is still its strength, but the ending here is somewhat different from my input end frame. Maybe noise added during video upscaling caused different changes. Then look at this realistic one. You can see character movements are still very natural, but during fast movements or large amplitude movements, it becomes blurry. There are also vehicles driving in the background overall no problem. Then let us look at this group. Videos between two completely unrelated images. How does the model handle it? Look at this first. I think between two completely unrelated images, the biggest influence is how the prompt is written. Like this case, I used the automatic prompts. Actually, the effect is okay. Transition is relatively natural. Has that game animation transition effect. Look at this one again. Also achieved interaction between two images through similar transition effect. I think this processing method is more natural. Obviously, adding a teleport action at the end brings out the end-frame content. Pretty good. Finally, this group is like a dissolved transition effect. This should be the most common result everyone gets between two images without strong correlation. Let us just take a brief look. Actually, for this group, I originally wanted to achieve the effect of smoke quickly covering the front, then dispersing to reveal the end-frame content, but tried several times and did not achieve the desired effect. This one is the closest. Okay, three workflows have been introduced. I believe through my cases. Everyone also more or less understands the model capabilities. Actually, everyone's workflows are similar. The key still lies in prompt writing. The expansion instructions here. I also tested quite a few times to reach a satisfying result. Also running this workflow locally still has certain hardware requirements. If you run out of VRAM, you can prioritize changing Gemma 3 to the FP8 version. Then I recommend everyone check out the VRAM control node in this repository because I am running on an online platform now. I cannot demonstrate for everyone, but you just need to download it, directly search this name, place it anywhere in the workflow because according to the author S tip, this node works without connecting any nodes before or after it. If anyone has other better nodes, feel free to leave a message. Helping more partners run locally. Of course, if you do not want to hassle, welcome to test online. I made a I app modes for all three workflows. No need to understand nodes. Just click input prompt. Then choose prompt mode, resolution frame count here. Then set camera movement LoRa, click run, and you are good. Now, new users can also experience 48G VRAM for free. Come and experience it quickly. I am Biu Boom. If you find my channel helpful, remember to like and subscribe. See you in the next video.